I'm enjoying some R&R &R in uh, Jordan Station. This is a Ramada Inn. A beautiful location right next to uh, Lake Ontario. And over there, far, far in the distance, That's Toronto. It was pretty cool watching the, yeah, it's a tree over there, but uh, they have this thing that you can like it's a, uh, like a jet engine, but that uses uh, it uses water, right? And so. You gotta balance yourself, but <laughs> you can pretty much fly. You know? Anyway, I stopped here on my way to uh, Iroquois uh, Wildlife Park, and I got a new camera. I know some people would be laughing because uh, a few months ago I was uh, comparing. D7200 to do camera that there was everybody that uh, got everybody excited uh, D500 and I play with it a little bit I was at a show in New York City and it was just like a monster right who would want to get such a camera you know like the body i like the body because i got large hands and before i had a da10 and i really loved that you know the design like the format you know the form factor of the da10 and d500 when i tried it it was you know, pretty much the same camera right like weight wise and form wise like very comfortable at least for me but the price was like crazy and it's a dx format right and then i went to uh, dxomark.com that uh, like I trust them you know but a lot of people find their test results are kind of like too academic and they don't have uh, any real life applications but with um, uh, many cameras I find that their sharpness test for example you know help you choose the proper lens you know uh, and I had all kinds of Nikon cameras right so the previous one was 7200 for wildlife with a Nikkor 200 to 500 millimeter lens and I started looking at 500 again because yeah like DxO Mark basically was saying that the ISO performance of 500 was not very good like the the ISO number or ISO as some people say it uh, at which the image is still high quality is actually lower than on even on D5500, right? So image-wise, I believe this is that it's it's good for for uh, good light, but I wouldn't call it a sports camera. You know, like okay, sports maybe like uh, outdoors, but not indoors. Um, and so then I got. Uh, the 7200 was not cutting it, so to speak. Like I had trouble focusing with the uh, uh, with the fast flying birds, and so I got D7500. And again, DxO Mark. Back to DxO Mark. DxO Mark uh, gave top results to 7500, uh, especially in ISO, like high ISO performance. It was actually the it's the best 7500 right now, according to DxO Mark is the best Nikon DX camera in terms of ISO performance, like low light performance. It's like 1430 ISO, so you still get top of the line image, whereas with, uh, with the 500 it's like 1330 or something, just kind of like worse than D7200, you know. Uh, but anyway, so I, start, I spent money, I couldn't fathom 2699 Canadian plus our 13 percent tax for 500 uh, because 7200 was not working so I got 7500 and I started playing with it and it's a great camera 
it's uh, I would say it's much better than 7200 like the metering became much more precise you know it's lighter it's faster 8 frames a second the touch screen is great uh, but uh, the battery life went down the resolution of the rear display went down um, and so I started looking at especially one of the major reasons right why I got 7500 was the group autofocus uh, basically it's five points acting as one the thing with these is is that yeah they're very they can be useful but the camera gives equal weight to all of these five points unlike like D9 you know mode where you have one point and then the other eight are kind of like secondary the camera resorts to them only if it cannot focus in your main point so group focus is great for shots of some fast moving you know birds and animals when you have trouble keeping a single, single uh, point focus on a single focus point let's say on, on a bird's eye right if it's flying across your frame at like 75 miles per hour and so 7500 has that right they added that uh, they took it from D750, D810 and D500 uh, the problem is that the camera looks at all these five points as equal and so it'll choose the point which is closest to the camera so let's say if you are trying to shoot a bird uh, sitting far away on a, on a tree branch and the branch is extended towards you you know and you're standing on the ground so if you choose the group autofocus it'll be focusing on the branch all the time you know if you let's say if you know it, if it's too dark and you have trouble with single you know single focus point and so group focus point it's only good when the background is totally clear let's say a bird is flying and you see water behind it or this it's you know just the background is the sky so those five points they have nothing to distract them with you know so they they can be useful but the major method is still single point AF it's just that uh, quite often you have to you know try both so you have to be able to change them quickly and I was surprised to see that uh, this quick change option is available on D500 but it's not available on D7500 like on D500 you can program the um, the back button focus AF on button in the back there or any like F1 preview you can program so that as soon as you press it the camera starts tracking it switches into AF on mode and it changes to any type of focus modes you, that you want like let's say single focus point you not just one but you can choose from any of the, of the focus points so you can assign that back button and uh, I picked this up from this guy Mark Smith in uh, Florida and that's what he does he uses the shutter button in continuous mode just you know to shoot and then he, he says he doesn't he's not a fan of back button focusing but since it's already there a dedicated button he just programmed it to switch to group of the focus and start tracking and I even emailed the uh, Nikon customer support asking them if I was maybe missing something like I didn't see this option at uh, D7500 and surprisingly got a reply you know they sent me an email they said no uh, this option this ca this kind of like customization is not available with the Nikon D7500 you know and this was kind of like disappointing because uh, it's not easy to 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 change focus point basically you have to lower the camera with this big lens and you have to use both hands to change the point the for, let's say from single point to group focus point right and that was one of the major reasons why I got this D7500 so anyway I started thinking again about D500 which I called back bad 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 camera a few months ago because it was uh, so expensive and didn't didn't seem to have uh, too much value but I started looking at it because of all these or the the amazing level of customization like forget the image quality the sensor uh, it's just from the specs it seemed like a you know good camera for wildlife photography because it's you know so 
customizable, right? And I started thinking that in Canada it's $26.99 and the D7500 was $16.99, so it's a thousand bucks. And I got an extra warranty on that one. And so I went to the store and I looked at it and I said, so how much would I have to pay if I take this one 500 if I give you back the 7500 and I also return the warranty and I just buy the D500 with a factory warranty how much would I have to give you and they said $950 I said let's do it <laughs> and they said are you sure you don't want to take the warranty I said how much is that and they said, well, extra, like the factory is uh, two years, but, you know, there's, uh, if you get extra warranty, it's no lemon. You know, you'll, you'll get a new camera if this one breaks three times for the same reason. It's like really, you know, with expensive cameras, it's a really good option. It's basically Henry's. Henry's, the chain of stores in Canada, it's their own extended warranty and it's transferable. Like if you sell the camera, it's transferred to the new owner whereas the factory warranty is not transferable so anyway they gave me a good deal and they said that 1200 if you you know buy the lower version of this extra warranty it's like extra two years so so basically the total is four years warranty two plus two and uh, actually Canada yeah our prices are higher than in US but our warranty in general is uh, better than from Nike and USA for some reason. Like you see here, it's two years. I'm pretty sure in the States it's only one year for the same camera. Um, and so this is it. I, um, I decided to pull the plug and change my opinion for this camera. So it's already hooked to, uh, to my lens. And yeah, you see, everything is different. And it has a dedicated button, a phone button. And I did exactly like this guy Mark Smith did. So I programmed the AF phone button to switch to uh, group focus and start tracking, right? So as soon as you push this button, it switches to group and it starts tracking. And over here, I just use the shutter speed button in AFC mode, single point. And the metering is, uh, spot but I programmed this one actually this was available on 7500 I but over there they don't have preview button they have F1 and this one is preview so I programmed this one if I press this the metering mode switches to matrix as soon as I keep it pressed it's matrix you know and so I just did uh, some quick testing outside shot some birds and um, uh, showed that girl that was, uh, you know, flying on the jet, jet thing and uh, some birds, and it works really well. You know, I can change quickly from spot to matrix. I can change from single point to um, to group, and the camera is sits very nice in in hands. You know, like the viewfinder is amazing because its a magnification level is much higher than on. Uh, D7200 and D7500. The screen in the back has a much higher resolution, so it's um, you know easier to work with. And of course, the um, all the controls are pretty much taken from uh, uh, DA10. Like over here, so you have quality metering mode, uh, white balance ISO button is here, and the viewfinder is round, the piece and just to give you an idea of uh, the quality of this camera, like you see over here, that's how you uh, adjust your the sharpness of your viewfinder, and it and it and it there's an arrow right, and it says uh, basically rotate, rotate to the right plus to the left minus, right? It's kind of like uh, you know you do like this, and I try to move it, it doesn't budge. What the heck? And I was afraid to break it. And then finally I was playing with it and I realized that you have to pull it. You have to pull it open and then you adjust it. And once you're done adjusting, you push it back so it's locked. You know? So this is, is uh, uh, this helps uh, 
to uh, not to scrub your sharpness again if you hit it with something you know like I never saw something like this on other cameras but that's just one thing that tells you about the quality of this amazing quality of this camera and look at the uh, the battery also the battery door is different also is much more robust you know the the SD card slot um, door is different again much more durable and there's two 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 slots over there instead of one on 7500 but I'm just using SD card that's enough oh and one more thing one last thing which is also very nice is this um, this thing over here this joystick that joystick makes the life of a photographer so much easier because you can move the focusing point anywhere in the frame real fast you know you move it on and also this point has uh, programmable features because when you press it you know when you push it sideways it moves the focus point but if you press it that thing has another function that you can program and you can uh, tell camera what to do it's like amazing there's so many things here that you can customize you know and um, I really look forward to uh, to working with this amazing camera so <laughs> so I take back what I said about this bad 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 camera so let's just call it bad boy you know uh, in, in in the sense that it's like really you know amazing and tomorrow I'm going to the wildlife uh, a park uh, north of Batavia uh, New York and so I went like I said I went out and I took some first shots and one thing I noticed compared to 7500 like metering is a little bit uh, like in a regular regular uh, mode it seems a bit darker so a couple of times I had to use uh, compensation even in spot metering but I hope I'll figure this out and um, I didn't even bother with the 10 frames a second because <laughs> that's crazy fast I, I just use the slow continuous mode uh, which is uh, you can program to anything like 3, 5, whatever right over here so I just use the CL low continuous and I put it at 5 5 frames a second and all these uh, so here's some shots that I took with it, they were all taken in uh, uh, f5.6 aperture priority uh, auto ISO where I set the lowest limit to 500 and the maximum was you know fully open and I, I programmed the uh, minimum shutter speed as like the lowest point you know where you go there auto shutter speed I, I moved the uh, the thing the slider all the way to the left because it has a very good uh, the lens is very good has very good uh, image stabilization and what else and focusing so I use AFC continuous on the shutter button and then AF on, AF on button was programmed for group focus with uh, tracking and um, and also I changed the uh, the focusing, the delay in focusing when there's um, when your uh, uh, image is blocked by something, right? I I moved it all the way to the left. Minimum res minimum delay, just like what I did on 7200 and 7500. I tried many other modes, but I find that this helps camera refocus really fast, and so it requires focus. And I just used the single point, like full all available focus points but uh, either single point or group focus point and so shutter speed yeah and the uh, metering was uh, spot and a couple of times I tried matrix with that preview button uh, very convenient very useful so here's some shots uh, more to come tomorrow so first thing with the before the sunrise I'm gonna leave this uh, Jordan Station Ontario and drive to the border with the US which is about half an hour and then half an hour east of that, that's the park where I'm going to. Uh, uh, they promise good weather tomorrow. So I hope uh, I'll continue testing this camera. So thanks for watching. Here's my first pictures.